Hello, my name is Connie Jacobs Jenkins. I'm an American Society of Clinical Pathologists Board of Registry Registered Medical Laboratory Technician with 28 years of clinical laboratory experience. I'm a senior at Winston-Salem State University in the Clinical Laboratory Science Program. I'd like to thank you for taking the time today to show interest in my poster presentation of my research project. My research investigates the incidence of community-associated methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or CAMRSA, and colonization of gravidus women and the effect that colonization might have on the neonate. For my research, I investigated the questions if a mother is colonized, specifically genitally colonized, with CAMRSA, could or would that colonization be laterally transferred to the neonate during the birth process? Could the colonized infant subsequently develop serious and sometimes life-threatening complications? Does colonization or active infection of the neonate call for the development of a screening protocol and perhaps even future development of a routinely used vaccine? I found that CAMRSA is becoming, increasing, becoming an increasing problem, not just here in the United States, but globally. MRSA has been on the rise since it was first identified in the 1960s. The media has taunted it as the superbug, and it was once thought to be exclusively hospital acquired. But the overuse of antibiotic therapies has given way to a new strain, USA 300, which is responsible for 80% of the United of the community of Acquired or community associated MRSA identified in the United States. CA MRSA is becoming increasingly prevalent and pathogenic worldwide. Antibiotic therapies differ from country to country, and the strain of MRSA has adapted to these differences. You can see on the map on my poster presentation here that the um, at CRSA, CM, CA MRSA is of prevalent to pandemic proportions. It's found all over the world with, C with the USA 300 being the most prevalent in the United States. Currently, and uh, as I said, the antibiotic therapies vary from country to country. That's why we have the, all the different strains. Currently, CAMRSA is less virulent and more susceptible to non-beta-lactam antibiotics than the hospital-acquired strain or HAMRSA. Both manifest pathogenic tendencies and pose a risk for the newborn with its underdeveloped immune system and its limited treatment options. That means that early detect detention and intervention are crucial. CAMRSA can cause serious and even life-threatening complications in the newborn. <coughs> Excuse me. Many avenues for inoculation of the neonate are present during the normal delivery process. From the insertion of the fetal monitor to, into the scalp to the cutting of the umbilical cord, there are many openings through which a newborn can become infected with MRSA. There are reported incidences of scalp abscesses, infected umbilicus, blood cultures, and tracheal aspirates that have been cultured positive for CA MRSA in a newborn. All, if the colonized mother should develop an infection in her placenta or in the fluid of the amniotic sac, the risk of serious complications in the neonate are gravely increased. Scalp abscesses have been linked to osteomyelitis, cellulitis, septicemia, and death. Staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome, SSSS, while not being life, not life threatening, is the most common result of CA MRSA infections and results in extended hospitalization, even though the patient usually experiences a full recovery. Detection of MRSA is easy and inexpensive. Currently, prenatal testing includes swabbing for group B streptococcus. We could very easily implement prenatal screening for CA MRSA by swabbing of the nares, any open sores, rectal vaginal area, or the inguinal crease, which could easily and non-invasively be, be performed. The swab is then transported to the lab where it's plated on selected media. Most of the media today develops a colorimetric result within 18 to 24 hours is if MRSA is present. This is an example of a, of a media simpler, similar to the one that we use in our laboratory. It, uh, MRSA or uh, Staphylococcus aureus grows on this media. If the Staphylococcus aureus is methicillin resistant, it will grow and produce this really pretty 
blue, bluish green sheen. It's without a doubt you know that the methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus is there and uh, you can do further testing from, from there on but you can, um, there's no doubt as to whether it's there, whether it's present or not. If it's positive then you can, then that would necessitate the treatment of the mother just prior to delivery and or intervention on the half, behalf of the neonate. Mothers calling us with MRSA also risk infection at the ephesiotomy site chorioamnionitis in cases of premature rupture of membranes and mastitis is MRSA has been isolated from breast milk. While most infections of the neonate are restricted to the skin and soft tissues, fatal infections have been reported. One of the cases cited, it was a French case cited in my research, the infant cultured positive for CAMRSA in their blood, in his blood umbilicus and in tracheal aspirates and the infant died on day 16 of the study or day 16 from a MRSA, CA MRSA infection. There are four criteria for um, implementing a screening protocol or screening program. One is that the problem must be clinically important. Uh, the death of even one infant is too much. It necessitates attention. Uh, the test, it's a preventable death. The test must be accurate, safe, and acceptable. The tests, these tests are accurate. They're safe. It's non, a non-invasive procedure. <coughs> and it's, and it's an acceptable procedure. It's, it's tested and, and true. Three, early detection must improve prognosis. If we know that this child may have complications or has complications that are a result of, of MRSA, we know that the mother was colonized, the child was presenting with, with problems, we can address it quickly and efficiently. And the screening program must be cost effective. The cost for screening for, for MRSA is less than $20 per patient for two culture swabs. It doesn't take any special culture swab, just the same ones that you use to do your throat cultures or uh, wound cultures. And then two plates. This is allowing for the screening of two different sites. It is less than $20 per patient. A uh, vaccine doesn't seem practical at this time, and pro while prophylactic treatment of CAMRSA may not be indicated for all that have a positive screen, screening will allow the physician to make a decision about treatment and allow caregivers to be aware of the complica should complications arise. We can teach these parents, you know, what to look for, what might show up in their child, so that we can do uh, early intervention and uh, and catch the the disease before it progresses, the infection before it progresses to a life-threatening situation. According to an ongoing study of the University of Chicago, USA 300 has increased dramatically in appearance and dominance. You can see right here in 1997 we had almost zero cases of USA 300. Starting in 2001 we started seeing an increase and this yellow line goes up to here. By 2006, we had increased dramatically in the number of cases of USA 300 MRSA, CA MRSA that we're seeing. Um, it's showing itself to be more virulent, and it also shows signs that it has upregulated. This adaptability shows the dangers of the future from this superbug. With the rising cost of health care, treatment that is geared toward prevention is demanded in the future. The preventable cost of loss of even one infant's life is not acceptable. CAMRSA is a rising concern that must be addressed and attention needs to be taken to stop the spread of this pandemic. Again, I want to thank you for taking the time to look at my poster, to listen to my presentation on my research, and to consider my research. If you have any questions, my contact information is right here. I'll be glad to answer anything that I can answer for you. And again, thank you for